Well, I'm honored to have him. We're going to cover the waterfront in the next hour. Former Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura, multi-time, but number one New York Times uh, bestseller. And he's giving us the premiere interview here today. His book tour, uh, TV tour, starts next week, a limited tour on national TV and radio. But he said he'd give me the first uh, interview, and we're very honored to have him, and I count him as a friend. And the reason I admire Jesse Ventura, even though I don't agree with him 100%, he doesn't agree with me 100%, is that he's a real guy. And being genuine nowadays is getting so rare. And so I count myself very lucky to know Jesse Ventura. I want to get into the book with him. I want to get his take on will he run for president? Would he go VP uh, under Rand? Or will he want to run as the, uh, as the top of the ticket? I'm going to throw out some wild cards here. Uh, we're going to get into the lawsuit. He's got some news on that. He says he won't say much, but he's uh, very, very pleased. We'll just leave it at that. We'll talk about that. At the bottom of the hour, we'll get into uh, openly backing Al-Qaeda and false flags and uh, where he thinks the world's going uh, right now with Jesse Ventura. But first off, it goes on sale next week officially in bookstores. You can order it off Amazon, pre-order it. We hope you get it at InfoWarsStore.com so you support the broadcast uh, and what the governor's doing. But I read this book. I couldn't put it down because it's got so much new info plus all the rock bottom info they killed our president. That's the title. And Jesse Ventura with Dick Russell and uh, David Wayne, uh, who co-wrote it. Uh, Jesse Ventura joins us. Governor, good to hear your voice again. Good to be on, Alex. Nice to hear you. It's been since spring, and I've gotten in, I think, about 50 rounds of golf since the last time we talked. Oh, good. So you've gotten in 50 rounds of golf. <laughs> wow. Well, I like to golf, Alex. Hey, uh, I would golf if I was better at it. I don't care. When you get my age, I'm 62 now. It's the only damn sport you can do anymore. And who have you been rooting for? On what, golf? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I, 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 root, I root against all the guys that use the long putters. <laughs> I'll put it to you that way, because that's an illegal club. The, the rules of golf say you must, the club, you must swing it. Well, that's anchored. So I always root against their nice people, don't get me wrong, but I just always root for the conventional people who've putt the old way. What is your handicap on a standard course? Uh, I'm, a, I'm about a 15 or 16. I'll shoot, I'll shoot in the mid to upper 80s if I'm playing pretty good, and if I go into the 90s, I'm not playing so good. Yeah, I want to take up golf again because I grew up on a golf course and my dad was always pretty good, but I just haven't had time. And now I go out to the golf course with friends and it is embarrassing. But I, I guess that's part of a sport. Oh, you, it's like anything you do in the world. You must practice. If you're going to shoot pool, you got to shoot pool. Uh, no, if you're going to play ping pong, you got to practice. Uh, anything you do requires practice to be good at it. I heard you've gotten pretty good at surfing. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Not in comparison to the, the guys out there in the world. I'm not pretty good. Oh, by the <laughs> way, I forgot to tell you this last time I talked. Uh, Dave Mustaine and uh, Willie Nelson and us went out to dinner. We just happened to run into Willie Nelson and went out to dinner with him. He, uh, Willie Nelson said, the first thing he said is, how's the governor? So he wanted me to say hi to you. Oh, absolutely. Give Willie my best. There's another true American who, who's come up through, you know, working the honky-tonks all the way to superstardom, and I don't think it's ever gotten to his head. Well, you know why I don't think it did? I mean, he comes from just right here in Texas and reminds me a lot of my dad, kind of the same cloth, but uh, he didn't get big and, and literally, you know, had to sell famous songs for like 50 bucks, uh, some of the most famous country songs out there, to buy baby diapers, as he said. He didn't really become successful till he was about 50. Yeah. Yeah, no, really. Willie, Willie and I, when we spent the day together, had so much fun talking about his early music career compared to my early wrestling career. And it's amazing, uh, all the tie-ins of the same type of feelings and the same. I mean, I remember, I remember wrestling once where I had to drive 620-mile round trip, right? 310 each way. And I paid for my own gas and I ate dinner at the A and W and at the end of the night I got a thirty dollar payoff and it and it cost me twenty eight bucks. So I made two dollars and I worked for over sixteen hours counting the driving. By the way, I'm glad you brought that up. We had uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper 
on, and he had a lot of good things to say about you. It's the 25th anniversary of the hit movie They Live. Yes, sir. And the last time I saw you guys together was in Major League Two, wasn't it? No, no. Roddy and I did a pilot together uh, that never that got bought up and then canceled at the last moment. Uh, I forget. I can't even remember. Sure, the but I'm saying the last time I saw you guys together on the big screen. Uh, I don't know uh, when it would have been. You did like a mock trailer, and I think it was in Major League Two, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, but that didn't have nothing to do with Roddy. Roddy wasn't in that. The, okay, one of the... Uh, I was with all my reps on that. That's right. You know how it is. Everything just mixes together oh, over time. I'm old, Alex, <laughs> and I'm a lot older than you. <laughs> well, you corrected me, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, shifting gears into more serious subjects. Let's the book. Yeah, let's talk about the book. And, and, and first off, the fact that they say 50 years later, no one's allowed to be in that area of downtown unless you're invited and believe the official story. What is this, North Korea? Well, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, again, you know, I've come to determine, Alex, it's this simple. Someone could produce a film today of somebody shooting from the grassy knoll and mainstream media wouldn't cover it because I saw that completely when I went to Chicago and I met Judith Barry Baker, who was Lee Harvey Oswald's mistress in New Orleans, his lover. Uh, Oswald was separated from Marina, and uh, and Judith, who can, who has the, the, some of the most explosive stuff. The fact that Jack Ruby knew Lee Harvey Oswald since Oswald was a child. The guy who killed him knew him. Wow. Knew him well. She went to dinner with them on multiple occasions. She knew him as Sparky Rubenstein. You know, his real name. And, and, and he shortened it to Jack Ruby later. And, uh, and we went, imagine Jesse Ventura, governor of Minnesota, and her calling a press conference in Chicago, and one camera showed up. That shows that people know to keep their mouth shut. Normally, you have a press conference, well, there'd be 20 cameras there. It shows you also that mainstream media, and this is what it gets down to, they've been bamboozling us for 50 years on this. They're not about to now show something that shows they've deceit and lied to us. So they're going to continue with the, with the, the Oswald story and all the rest of us. They're going to marginalize us. I'm noticing already on this press tour, I'm not getting much mainstream media in the book, with this book. Very you're, much less limited. Fox News, of course, won't have me on at all. Sure, so you're saying the stuff you've got lined up for next week that you're seeing a lot less. I mean, you would think with the 50th anniversary, you get even more coverage. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing on like Good Morning America, nothing on the networks, nothing on MSNBC. Uh, I'll be on Piers. I'll be on Howard Stern. Uh, uh, only the people with some courage, you know, who, who are willing to go out there and, and seek the truth. But as far as the rest of the mainstream media, uh, again, when I was with Judith Baker, who could have told them that Oswald and Ruby knew each other intimately, you know, it wasn't just some passing high. I met the guy once. They, and, and, you know, and that's a dynamite. That's a bombshell. That changes the whole thing. That the murderer of Oswald knew him, and yet the media could care less about it. Well, it's on record. I've talked to Jim Mars, who has been around so long. Sure. He used to go to that topless bar right out of college and knew Jack Ruby and knew all those people, and it was known that Oswald hung out there t constantly. Well, he, he wasn't constantly there, but he was involved with them enough that he, he, it would be it would be the type where a lot of people knew him. Heck, we show in the book where there were four four of the strippers, four of the dancers, positively identified. No, no, I mean, I, I mean, according to Mars, yeah, but uh, I mean, according to Mars, uh, Oswald was in there. I mean, that oh, was sure he was in there on many, not a lot, but on you know certainly enough occasions to where people got to know him there. Well, well, according to Mars, that was one of the meetup places to do business and stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Jim, Jim's very knowledgeable. Again, you know, uh, you know, I quote him in, in this book. You know, we we had the good fortune doing this book to have all these resources at our disposal, which we used and we put them in a great order of sixty-three reasons. And when you read, we we lead the book off with the cats and Bach memo, and people need to understand this, Alex. Two conspiracies took place. The first conspiracy was that of the actual murder of our president. And the second conspiracy was the cover-up of it. And some people are in both. Some people
people are only in one. You know, and and I decided to leave the book off with the with the Katzenbach memo, Nicholas Katzenbach. He was the acting attorney general on Monday morning. Now bear in mind, the president got killed on Friday. Oswald got killed on Sunday. This is Monday morning. We have the. I mean, this isn't me making this up. This is the memo from the acting attorney general. Because naturally, Bobby wasn't there. His brother had just been killed. He's not going to go to work Monday. And uh, a memo from his deputy in charge to Lyndon Johnson through his proper channels stating that we must convince the public that Oswald had nobody working with him, that he was completely alone, and nobody else out in the world is loose right now that was part of this, and the fact that we, we must convince the public that if there were, would have been a trial, he would have been convicted. And then it goes on to even more stuff. I mean, what more of a smoking gun do you need? That's the whole thing. Oh, and then it goes on to say you need to form a commission of top integrity people, to, and we can't allow any type of congressional or any other investigations to take place. Sure, but later they failed, and they did have a congressional committee, and what they found, 99% chance it was a conspiracy? Yeah, in 1976, committee, and this, and this is another thing people fail to realize, the government's last view of the murder of John F. Kennedy and its last response was that it was a highly probable that there was a conspiracy. They wouldn't say unequivocally there was, but they said most probable. And then they turn it over to the Justice Department, and what happens to it? Nothing. Well, let me tell you a brief story, and this is on YouTube. I did the interview like, now it's about five, six years ago. George Norrie came to town. We put on a big event. Thousands came out uh, for 590 AM, our local affiliate, KLBJ, the namesake of the president. He actually used to own it. And uh, this distinguished older gentleman comes up with his distinguished uh, uh, son, who was older, and said, I'm Mr. Grody. I own the funeral home, and I want to tell you, Alex, I came here because you're here. I was up there, you know, signing stuff. He said, I'd like to do an interview. I'm decided I'm, I'm pretty old, I'm, but he was still very sharp. He said, I only owned one funeral home then. And he said, they, the FBI came in with Lee Harvey Oswald, put ink on his hand, ink, and then put it on the rifle in front of me and then told me, shut up. And then when they buried him there, they came back a week later, dug it up and basically ran off with the body. And he came there in the morning and it was all dug up and gone. He, and then I said to him and his, um, he and his son, I said, all right, well, next week I'll come out to your home. And it was up there in the hills overlooking, you know, big mansion. As it turned out, they owned one of the biggest funeral home chains in Texas. Ended up being a very successful. And I'm driving, and, and, the, and, and, and they're not there. And I later learned, on the way to meet us at their house, a big truck came in and ran them off the road into the ditch and almost killed them, Jesse. No kidding. No, that's a true story. Really? Yep. Well, you know, we cover that portion in the book because... Uh, you know, initially when the weapon was sent off to the FBI and then it came back, there were no prints on it at all to be found. And then, lo and behold, and then we do talk about that guy because, uh, he, you know, he, he did go public, and it's in my book also, that uh, he verified that, that Oswald's hand had, uh, had uh, uh, what do you call it, all over it after they left. Yeah, yeah, they didn't just, they didn't just, because he, he broke it to me, and it, it, he's the guy. He said they didn't just take his hand and get it to put it on there. They put it, the prints on with ink, he said. Right. And it's just amazing, and, 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 and Jesse, imagine this, and, and maybe it's a coincidence, but the family said, that's it, we're done, this is very suspicious, and then uh, he was 90, he was like 90 then. I don't even know if he's alive now, I need to find out. Very nice guy, but he was sharp, yeah. and, he, and he said, I'm ready to tell the truth of what happened, and just a, you know, a Texan. It, it, and then, and then he got ran off the road with his wife, coming to meet me to officially put it on the record. Wow. Well, you know, they did the same thing to, to uh, Lee Bowers. Yep. Who was the gentleman that was in the tower at the railroad yard that day and saw the suspicious stuff behind the fence? Uh, Lee Bowers was later found dead in what allegedly was supposedly a one-car accident. But if you talk to the to, the sheriff doing the report, the, the, the official report, they actually showed that he, he too was run off the road. I know you know probably more about the Kennedy thing than I do because you focus on it more. How many people does Mars and others say died suspiciously after? Oh, it, it, 
one of the biggest we cover is Dorothy Kilgallen. Oh, yeah. Dorothy Kilgallen was the sing, syndicated columnist, big name from New York, who went on the rampage when Kennedy was killed, and she wanted the truth. She didn't buy it. She's actually the only person that did a one-on-one -on -one interview with Jack Ruby. And when she came out from that interview, she stated, I'm going to bust the Kennedy assassination wide open. Well, we cover a whole chapter of the book on her. And she went home, she was murdered, and all her transcripts that she had were stolen. And she and get this, she had been savvy and smart enough to make duplicate copies, and her, her friend had them. A week later, the friend died, and hers were gone, too. Unbelievable. Yeah, we cover that all in this book. This book, I'll tell you, it's a fascinating read for people. People that love to read Tom Clancy and Vince Flynn and all that stuff, they're all good. Don't get me wrong, I'm not knocking. Those guys got great imaginations. They're fantastic writers. But what intrigues me more about going after Kennedy is the people are real. You're not dealing with figments of imagination or anything. You're dealing with real facts that went on. And assemble, assembling the jigsaw puzzle is the real challenge, fun part for me about it. Is Because that's what it's like. It's like a huge jigsaw puzzle thrown on the floor. And you have to take every bit of evidence and start piecing it together till you figure out what the picture is. And then when the picture comes to you, you get some closure because you truly understand that I do not believe Lee Harvey Oswald ever fired a shot. Well, clearly we know that he was basically CIA sheep dipped. He was at that secret base in Japan. He was sent to infiltrate the Russians, allowed back in after he supposedly had, you know, joined the Russians. I mean, it's ridiculous. He's hanging out with the white Russian community. Well, one of the easy reasons to you know that it's so is that one of the documents they won't release even today is Lee Harvey Oswald's tax return. That's right. And I mean, how can that be national security? Um, where, he, where he made his money, his national security, and how much he made. See, they don't dare release it because if the trail led back to the government, the paper trail of the money of being paid, well, that, that again changes the whole scenario of what they told us. And, and, you know, to me, there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever that the Warren report is completely fraudulent. People need to understand when the government... They, when you allow them to investigate themselves, that's putting the fox right in the hen house. You know, and I, I realize it would be difficult. How do you get an independent civilians to investigate the government? But that's what needs to happen because when they form these commissions, they're, 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 they're just to rubber stamp whatever the government's position is on whatever it might be. And that's all that they do. And yet then the government uses them as the final thing. That, and then they won't answer any more questions on the subject because the Warren Commission said it, the 9-11 Commission said it, whatever the commission might be that says that this is, and, and they always come out exactly with the government's original story. That's why they call it the official story, Alex. It's generally used to protect officials. Well, sure, the old British uh, saying, no, no, you're right. Uh, the old British saying is, don't don't believe something until it's been officially denied. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so frustrating. Now, we're about to go to break, but I want to briefly ask you this about the general state of the country. You've got 91% in Reuters poll against openly bombing Syria. You've got it mainstream news that Republicans and Democratic leadership have been backing al-Qaeda. Uh, with NATO to attack Assad. I'm not saying he's an angel, but they've started the war. You've got you've got Seymour Hersh in the London Guardian today. It's up on DrudgeReport.com. Uh, says Bin Laden raid, one big lie. The whole thing's fake. I've had Navy SEAL families now officially on. I actually got them to come on air, and I've talked to others off air, including people that live in Austin. But I've had the families on air, and they've been on national news, saying they think it's all fake, and they put 23 of them on a helicopter, blew them up, none of it happened. Uh, we've got it coming out, the, 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 the uh, D.C. SWAT team says they were ordered to stand down. They think a cover-up at the uh, Navy base. My point is, everything's coming out now. Uh, there was a drill with the Boston bombing. Uh, they uh, executed you know, some of the friends of the Zarnev brothers. My point is, Governor, it looks like there's a mass awakening happening. 
uh, compared to what it used to be. What is your take on the state of the public mind right now? Admit that. We need to overthrow him to get a cooperative government in there that will allow the pipeline to go through. And because always follow the money, you know, I'm a great follower of Major General Smedley Butler, and uh, that's who I really judge when I look at our foreign policy. Then I go to Smedley's work, General Butler's work, and I compare it and say, hmm, what do I think Smedley Butler would say about this? Well said. And, and clearly, again, they're not going to show you all. Stay right there, Governor. We got to go to break. Stay there. I want you to come back with that. The Alex Jones Channel is the official page of the Info War. But don't miss what's happening on our other channels. The Info Warrior, with the week's best videos. Prison Planet Live, where Paul Joseph Watson gives his expert analysis. And keep up with the rest of the Info Wars crew on our other pages. All of our videos are available to repost for educational purposes. See the sidebar of the Alex Jones channel for the subscription links. And remember, you can always find our videos in the highest quality by becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Okay, we are back, folks, and we have... Uh Jesse Ventura, former Minnesota governor, with us. They killed our president. 63 reasons to believe there was a conspiracy to assassinate JFK. And uh, hopefully it will become a bestseller because people need to be woken up out there about the coup d'etat that took over our country. Governor, we were starting to get into war before we went to break. And I want to get back into war. But because we're on the subject of JFK with the 50th anniversary coming up, before we get back into war, I want to ask you here today, uh, do you agree with me and others that this is when we really saw the shadow government begin its ongoing coup d'etat? For me, that's why this is historically so important. This is when our country really started to become a tyranny. I, I agree uh, completely. I, I, at least in my lifetime, granted, I was only 12 years old when this happened. But uh, uh, I, I agree, Alex, that it was the murder of John F. Kennedy. It was a coup d'etat. Uh, people in this country got to stop being in denial, and they got to start realizing that assassinations of presidents happen all the time through history, and generally they are always conspiracies. There's not one person that does it. And, and it's ridiculous in this country that every assassination that takes place in this country, it's always a lone nut. And it's always done to a person who stands for peace. John F. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, John Lennon, all four of them stood for what? Peace. Ending a war. Great transition into war, isn't it, Alex? It's a perfect transition into war. You got cut off by the music, so I'd like you to recap and continue uh, where you were going, Governor, with... Well, war, wars are fought. I follow the teachings of Major General Smedley Butler, the two-time Congressional Medal of Honor winner. And he makes it very clear that wars are, are fought because someone's going to profit. Wars are done for profit. Certain people are going to make huge money, and they manipulate everything and, and, and force the hands and make these wars happen. They don't just happen because people don't get along. It's orchestrated. And in, well, here's what I believe and what I've learned through uh, on Syria. The oil companies want to put a pipeline through there, and Assad's not being cooperative. So it's in their best interest to overthrow his government, get in a cooperating government so they can get their pipeline through, and that all this chemical weapon stuff is the smoke and mirrors to get the U.S. people to back in for our military to go in there. I mean, when you look at chemical weapons, I find it astounding, the hypocrisy. What is napalm? Napalm's a chemical weapon that burns you to a crisp in a matter of a second, and we've been using it for 60 years. 
That's right. And how is how is us using a chemical weapon okay? But and, and and don't get me wrong, I'm not for chemical weapons. I'm not for the weapons at all. How about let's try peace a while? Imagine that silly concept that John Lennon saying about give peace a chance. Well, the last time I saw it's you, not going to happen because we're a country of war brokers here. That's right. The, the power of this country is the power to go to war. That's why we're fighting wars all over the world. And thank goodness, if hopefully these polls are correct, that 90% of us are saying, take your war and go to hell with it. Oh, it's more than that, probably. The polls, 91% in Reuters. But uh, Congress people, Republican and Democrats, said they were getting 100, 200, 300, 400 calls to one, depending on which member put out the numbers, against it across the board. I almost had a heart attack when I heard Rush Limbaugh say this looked like a frame job, false flag. The last guy I heard say that on a big forum like that was Jesse Ventura uh, last year on Piers Morgan talking about Syria. You said that I'm looking for a false flag. Do you remember a year ago saying that? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, and, and we're also going to have another false flag locally so that they can clamp us down more here, too. You know, they got to make us safe, don't they? Exactly. Is that what your gut tells you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, elaborate for new listeners. So we have a lot of new affiliates out there on why every time you get on national TV, you warn of false flags now. Uh, explain to people what a false flag is as a former military man. Well, it's it, well, what it is. It's it's not even military. It's truthfully almost political too. Oh yeah. It's, it's when a country desires to do something, they they do an operation called a false flag operation to to uh, to use propaganda from that to get the people to support going to war, support the position that they want to have happen. Which in the case of uh, you know uh, back in the days of the Cuban Missile Crisis in Cuba, they had one of the first that came to light was the Operation Northwoods, which was a false flag operation, and we'll tie it in with Jack Kennedy here. It was a false flag operation where our the Pentagon and all the power guys that wanted to go to war actually wanted to stage a false flag where it would make it look like Cuba attacked the United States which would then get the people of America angry enough that they would then be positive on an invasion of Cuba and a military action against them. It's been the Rookstag fire in Germany was a false flag operation done by Hitler and the Nazis to get the German people behind a war against the communists. False flag operations go on all the time during our history, and it's like standard operating procedure of how to go to war now. Uh, the Gulf of Tonkin incident in Vietnam, another false flag operation, where they stated the Vietnamese attacked us. And, and that's what justified Lyndon Johnson to send ground troops into Vietnam, according to these people. And then later it comes out from McNamara, the whole thing was fraudulent. It's hard to believe it how happened. it's hard to believe how time flies. It was like seven years ago that I was interviewing you down in San Antonio when you were doing a public speaking and book signing. And it was the first time I'd heard you, uh, you know, really get into going to Harvard. I think it was. And uh, hearing uh, McNamara, who was defense secretary, obviously, in 64, openly admitting it was all fake. Can you can you uh, bring us back to that point when you heard him for the first time? Unfortunately, I didn't get to do that. They wouldn't let me go in there. <laughs> sure, sure. But, I mean, you said when you heard him say that. Well, well yeah, Mac McNamara came out in, in all his public speaking and basically admitted that the Gulf of Tonkin incident was a false flag operation done to, you know, to change the minds of the Americans. You know, America, if somebody attacks us, we're going to war. We don't even think why. All we need is for anybody to attack the United States of America in any way, shape, or form. Sure. And, and we are going to war. Sure. Well, I was going back. I was going back to your anger. I mean, back then, you, you, were, you were palpably angry, you said, when you oh, first... Of course, because... Think about it for a moment, and we'll tie in with Jack Kennedy again. When they murdered Jack Kennedy, that was the license for Lyndon, his first meeting, Lyndon Johnson. When he got back to Washington and met with Kennedy's cabinet, the first topic of conversation of the very first meeting was the Vietnam War, of which we didn't have ground troops there yet. That's right. So that was the top priority was now we've gotten rid of Kennedy. Let's go to war. Let's go to war. What Kennedy wasn't going to let us do. 
and Lyndon Johnson was all for it. So into the Vietnam War. And what angers me about the Gulf of Tonkin incident, 58,000 of my generation were killed over an incident that never actually occurred. And a million Vietnamese. Oh, yes. I'm told, uh, probably more than that. Yeah, that's conservative. How many Vietnamese died? Higher estimates are at a million and a half, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no telling how many poor Vietnamese people died during a war that was all based on a lie. Sounds kind of familiar like Iraq, too, doesn't it? Exactly, but here's the good news. Mass destruction ties to Al-Qaeda. And don't you love this? Now Al-Qaeda's our ally in Syria. How do you think they... What do you think they were thinking when two and a half years ago they started funding Al-Qaeda to attack Syria on selling us to give up our liberties because of Al-Qaeda while our government now publicly is funding and arming Al-Qaeda? What is going on? What it tells me is Al-Qaeda had nothing to do with 9-11. How, how could we be the ally of the very people that allegedly attacked us on 9-11? It's incredible. Let's go back to false flags here briefly. Again, Governor Jesse Ventura joins us. Uh, that's big that you're saying you're concerned about a domestic false flag. I agree with you. The only way they can distract the public from all the NSA scandals and, and the IRS persecuting the Tea Party and, and uh, Fast and Furious and all the other scandals is a false flag. They're clearly gearing up for it. They're saying brace for Al-Qaeda to strike us. They're saying give Homeland Security more funding or you'll be attacked. Uh, what can we do to try to then stop a false flag? Oh, boy, I don't know off the top of my head, Alex. Uh, you know, the, the main thing for people to be is vigilant. Don't take this knee-jerk reaction. I mean, look at, your, look at your mainstream media stories today. When they come out on one of these tragedies, you can't believe anything. I agree. Because look at look at the thing, the, the the stuff that's gone on with the look at the shooting that took place in Connecticut. For eight for ten hours, they told us that the shooter's mom worked at the school. No, she didn't. See, the mainstream media just puts out propaganda to sell, and get ratings, and make money. They don't bother to listen. Uh, the Boston bombing, Governor. The Boston bombing, they had a drill, it was admitted, and then they said, no, we didn't, and then later had to admit it, total false flag. They had contractors with black backpacks. They've had a bunch of witnesses have been killed. I mean, it looks like the Kennedy assassination. Well, and, and, and has any of that been reported in mainstream media? No. 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 The only place things like that get reported are on your show and quote, unquote, underground or the Internet or whatever you want to deem it or label it. Let me ask you this. But mainstream media won't cover anything that does not have the government stamp of approval on it. And I think people need to wake up to that and understand that they all have. I mean, look at Bill O'Reilly. We I saw videotape from my friend Russ Baker showed it to me of Bill O'Reilly on current affair demanding an investigation of JFK's murder. This is way back in the 80s when new information had just come to light. O'Reilly's on there demanding that the government open up and investigate and tell us the truth about the murder of Kennedy. And yet today he writes a multi-million dollar best-selling book, all putting forth the myth that Oswald did it. He didn't really, that wasn't the reason for the book, but it was a book on Kennedy. But the conclusion was, of course, and that's where O'Reilly stands today, that Oswald acted alone. Now, what caused him to change his mind in those 25 years or 20 years? Money. Well, it shows why the Kennedy assassination is so important to the establishment, because 90 plus percent in major polls, as you know, believe there's a conspiracy and a cover up. And and if that lie falls, it all falls. But the, the dinosaur media already is a shadow of itself. That's why they want to censor the Internet and the free press. And that brings us into the NSA, cybersecurity. We don't get an apology. We get censored. That's why they're scared to have you on the mainstream media now, Governor, because you've been proven right. You said the NSA is spying on us. It's all admitted now. You said the WMDs are a lie. It's all admitted now. You said our government's running Al-Qaeda. It's all admitted now. I mean, on so many fronts, we've been proven right. That's why they're scared to have us on now. But they're only... But they're only making themselves obsolete. So, so where do you think this is all going? Well, uh, you know, I, 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 I can announce to you, I guess, today, Alex, that I'm going to be getting my own Internet show.
Good. So I will be on the internet, and uh, which is a new realm for me now, of moving forward and doing that. And uh, considering I'm really computer ignorant, when you want to get down to brass tacks, but I do see that that the internet is the future. Uh, pretty soon, the internet's going to replace mainstream television. I think within ten to fifteen years. Oh yeah, it's already happening. And, and yeah, I, I don't think television will be the. I'll be the old dinosaur that still has a big screen TV, hoping to get the football game on Sunday. Well, no, you just put your internet on the big screen TV. But Governor, this is exciting because I hadn't heard this. Are you breaking here now that you're going to start a radio show? That's wonderful. Oh no, well, it's 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 not just radio. It's going to be visual too. Oh, fantastic! Can you give us any details? Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, in order to, I'll, I'll give you this detail. Uh, do you remember, I don't know, Alex, if you're young enough or not, but uh, uh, way back when in, uh, in uh, uh, earlier in my life, they had what they called Radio Free America. Oh, yes. Europe, where they broadcast over the Iron Curtain. Yes. Well, that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to do this show from a foreign country, and I'm going to broadcast it into the United States. That way I might be free of drone surveillance, and I won't get arrested. That's right. So you're going to broadcast into occupied America. The share is against yeah, the wall. I'm going, to, I'm going to broadcast over the lines back into occupied America and allow them to hear the truth. That is a genius, absolutely, because that's what it is. I mean, it's not yeah, even a gimmick. I'll be joining, I'm in, I'm, and I'm joining a clientele that's marvelous, Wolfman Jack. That's right. <laughs> remember, remember when there was that mystique that the Wolfman was actually broadcasting from a foreign country because they wouldn't allow him here? Well, what's exciting about this is I guarantee you if you carve it up into vignettes, uh, radio stations will pick it up and, and TV stations. Well, it, it's uh, it's an exciting thing for me. I'll be working. The boss of the cunt of my company is an uh, uh, interesting fella. He's from Mexico City, and it'll be fun to work for someone who's not from the United States. See, I can't ver I can't get a job very good here in the states, so I got to go foreign to get one. Well, that's because they're scared of you. And speaking of that, would you uh, run on a ticket with somebody like Rand Paul? I don't know him well enough. I know his father. I've never met Rand. I know I know his father, Ron, and, uh, you know, but would I run on a ticket with him? I don't know. I haven't thought of it. I'll find out a lot more on Wednesday when I hit New York with Howard Stern to see if it's Ventura and Stern. <laughs> oh, so there's talk about you running for, for uh, office with Howard Stern. Well, I've made that. Statement. I, 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 if I did run, I would want Howard as my running mate. <laughs> oh yeah, I've heard that before. That would be wild. Uh, it's not, but but it's not a joke. It's for real. If I do it. Oh, I know he's popular on the East Coast. He's very popular all over. Not just no. That isn't the real the reason either. How, Howard has the most powerful radio show in America, and he wouldn't have to come off the air. It is powerful. I've I've been on it and experienced it. It is big. Well, here's the deal. See, when I ran for governor of Minnesota, I was doing talk radio on Minnesota. I had to lose my job. I, I had to be suspended without pay and taken off the air because of FCC regulations. That's right. Violates your First Amendment. Stay there, Governor. Final segment with Jesse Ventura. Man, the time went quick. We'll talk about the lawsuit and politics straight ahead. Stay with us. Jakari Jackson here, and I want to talk to you for a second about water. You know about ProPure, our flagship water purification system, but check out some of our portable water filter products at InfoWarsStore.com. The clearly filtered water pitcher. Also, for those of you on the go, we have the Athlete Edition filtered water bottle and the RAD Eliminator Pro Filtered Sports Bottle that removes radiation. And keep in mind, we have replacement filters for all of these products. The ever popular grab and go back favorite, the Life Straw, the Crystal Quest shower filter system, and the Aquapod kit, great for mass storage of water. And while you're at the InfoWars shop, pick up a copy of our latest book, 31 Days to Survival. You can find all this and more at the InfoWarsStore.com. And don't forget, it's your support that funds our operation. Sign up for our free newsletter at InfoWars.com forward slash newsletter. All right, final segment with Jesse Ventura. And he was dropping bombshells on me during the break about Howard Stern. They're serious about running for president. Uh, we're going to talk about this in just a moment. You'll find out more coming up next Wednesday when he goes on Howard's show. But the issue here, and I know you don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to try to get him to it right now. 
I know the inside baseball, but it's even been in the news, but back of the paper. Jesse Ventura, they lied and said that he said he's glad Navy SEALs died and that he got beat up. And there's no witnesses. And he says, okay, I'm going to retract this or I'll sue. They won't retract. He sues and says, I'm going to keep suing till you admit that it isn't true. No money, just admit. Then they won't do that. Then Chris Kyle sadly is killed. Then the media says Jesse Ventura is suing a widow. She has insurance. It's News Corps. It's the book. He's the one that's been de uh, defamed here. And it's a hoax that he's going after a woman. They have these fundraisers and all this for because the meanie Ventura is trying to hurt her. It, it's not true, folks. And she has not lost anything and will lose nothing because there's insurance through News Corps. So the issue here is they've run a hoax. So briefly, it makes me mad, Governor, and you told me off air th that the lawsuit's going well. Yeah, it's going well. Here's the deal with the wife. The wife chose to be the executor of the estate, and she knew full well that this lawsuit was pending with the estate. She didn't have to be the executor. You can get a lawyer to do that. You can get a friend, an uncle, anybody. She made a choice to interject herself into this lawsuit by, by becoming the executor of the estate. And I'm, and, and, and I'm not going against her. I'm going against a massive insurance company. I'm the little guy here. I've had, and it's cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars, and people are telling me I should drop it. Oh, you so told me the number. Pay, it's huge. Who's going to pay me back well over a quarter of a million dollars that this has cost me? And you gave them the clear chance. My name. You, you, you clear my name of a fraudulent, fabricated story that never occurred, and that's the bottom line. This has never been about money. I've got my own money. This has never been about money. But if the other side will not admit to the fabrication, well, then money's the only thing that talks at that point. I've been damaged. By the way, I, I called you on Skype in Mexico to give you the bad news, and... You you did almost didn't believe me, and and you and, and we're shaken, and 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 it's wrong to do things to people like this to try to destroy you, so you can't run for president. Now shifting gears, in the two minutes we've got left, tell me about the Howard Stern situation. Well, Howard and I, I floated it by him, and he had some interest in it, and from the time we were there, and we kind of that Howard twinkle in his eye that, and he said it might you know this and that, and I'll be out there on Wednesday, and so. Wednesday, I'm going to point blank him and say, Howard, I can't do it without you because there's certain things I need from Howard to make this successful. And one of the things is I despise raising the money, the bribing of the officials and all that. And if I had someone like Howard, how much money could Howard raise with his radio show? And I wouldn't even, I don't even want to know about it. You know? And it's not FCC and it's regulated. Well, and it certainly wouldn't be packing special interest money. You just make an appeal to everyday citizens. Well, that's what it's supposed to be in the first place. He that's could probably be done. He could probably raise a hundred million dollars, and then it wouldn't be beholden to be individual donations. And uh, XM Sirius is not under FCC regulations, so he could keep his show while he ran for office. Absolutely, there's always a method to my madness. You know, there's a reason I choose to do things like I do, and I usually think them out pretty well. And, uh, you know, and believe me, Howard's a very intelligent man. And, uh, you know, people know him as the shock jock, but there's other sides to Howard Stern, not just his performing side. Remember that, you know, all of us perform. People that are in the media industry, we all turn it on and off like you do a light. When governor? You perform, you perform when it's time now. Absolutely. To Thank you, Governor. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. All right, folks, Governor Ventura is now gone. And either way you slice it, off air, and he was going to get to it, but we ran out of time. He said a lot of it on air, or I kind of repeated it, and then he agreed with me. He told me he's in serious talks with Howard Stern to run for president, and Howard is VP to raise the money, because Ventura hates going around to the fundraisers and promising to do stuff. He absolutely hates it. And you can say what you want about Jesse Ventura. He, he's a real guy. I mean, I know him in person. I was the one that 
when he was, because for days he didn't have a cell phone, you know, driving his RV through Mexico to Baja. I called Tyrell. I emailed uh, Jesse and uh, Ventura called me back on Skype right when he read the email that I had some bad news for him. And they needed to talk to myself or Tyrell Ventura. Well, I got up here to the office when I said, try to give me a call on Skype because he doesn't have telephone down there in the Baja, but he has internet from a wireless deal that works sometimes. And, and you heard him that Sunday after I'd got him on the phone that Sunday when he'd arrived. I had him on the radio that Sunday uh, to talk about it uh, later in the afternoon. We taped an interview and I said, yeah, Chris Kyle, you know, the Navy SEAL, he says he punched you out for saying that you're glad that uh, Navy SEALs died. And he went, Alex, man, I just drove in here, buddy. Uh, he's, he's nice guy off air kind of more gruff and stuff on air but he's like man what, what are you talking about and he was like what he said say that again and then i told him about it and told him what was on fox news and he went huh uh, i mean i can't really do the imitation of it because he had it on speaker and his wife was there and she's like what and he's like when was this when did they say this and he was sitting there just dumbfounded i mean i'm not describing it well the way he the way he took it But it was like I'd basically called up and told him somebody was dead because he's a smart guy. He knew what that meant. They were defaming him that he was glad Navy SEALs were dead. And they've now got a petition with former Navy SEALs online. You know, he was in it before it was even called the Navy SEALs, the uh, underwater demolition team, to kick him out of it because uh, of him suing Chris Kyle like he's going after a widow. And, I mean, I knew that it wasn't true. And, and then we didn't just believe in Tura. We called the bar. We talked to the other people, folks that know him. They said, that's ridiculous. Everybody would have heard about that. That's ridiculous. He did that. Somebody would have gotten a fight with him if he said that. He was there for a commencement. And I've been around Ventura when he talks to veterans and airports and stuff many times. And he, you know, he's a sentimental guy and, you know, gets tears in his eyes saying, I think it's terrible. He saw a vet that had his leg blown off on prosthesis in an airport and talked to him and got upset. Ventura gets pretty mad in person, folks. I mean, he, it's not an act. The guy really does have a big temper, which he controls. He's very controlled about it. I've seen him actually get mad at the TSA. Uh, and I saw him really get shook up and uh, say that he had to go. And then he called me back later and we taped the interview. Uh, and uh, he told me that day, he said, I'm going to have to sue these people. This is crazy. And he's got all the Navy SEALs lined up, the owners, the witnesses, all of it. But none of that's in the media. So the thousands of Navy SEALs that aren't there in San Diego and who aren't in that area, they don't even know that the people at the bar and all that know it never happened. And Chris Kyle even writes in the book that he tells lies. And, and, and I'm not trying to, to, to myself to hurt some dead guy. I'm sad he's dead. Uh, but I just see all this promotion of how he's persecuting this widow and stuff. When I happen to know what Ventura spent, he doesn't even want people to know, folks. It is a lot of money. A, lo a lot more than what you heard. And he told him early on when he'd already spent 50000 a 100000 that I've got all the details. He said, you got to stop and, and lying and come out and say this is true, Kyle. He's been in meetings with Kyle. He said, man, you're a liar. You, I'm going to keep suing you. Do you understand how dare you? And they won't stop. And now Kyle's dead. And Ventura is not going to stop. And the, the lawsuit's going forward, by the way. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it.
They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. Well, I began to discuss with my wife protecting myself, her, and of course our children. Most importantly, I have three small children, ages 10, 9, and 5. Radiation really affects children more than adults because they have fast-growing cells. All the literature is clear on that. And I went and talked to medical doctors, scientists, nuclear physicists, nutritionists, and I said, what's the number one thing I can do to protect my family? And they said, Alex, it's leave the northern hemisphere. Go south of the equator. That's where the radiation levels are very, very low. If you look at the wind patterns, the north hardly interacts with the south. And it's unfortunate that we've done this to our planet. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. And it's the good iodine, the nascent iodine, that is able to block that and just do so many things uh, for your body and your health. I've been taking it. It's amazing. It's a lot better than coffee, I'm here to tell you. And that's why we are now offering our own nascent iodine that's double the strength, made in the best laboratory that is... Uh, FDA uh, certified and accredited, and it is double strength at half the price of the leading competitor. You know my rule, bring you the highest quality products at the lowest prices we can, so it's a win-win-win. I believe in you reap what you sow. So not only will you get the best deal on nascent iodine at InfoWarsLife.com for your general health and also for any type of emergencies or disasters, you will also be getting a great deal and supporting the info war and our news operation, promoting the cure for tyranny, the First Amendment, promoting liberty and a rediscovery of the Bill of Rights and Constitution and true Americana that's made this nation so great. So please join me in being among the first to visit InfoWarsLife.com. We've got discounts if you buy the nascent iodine in bulk. I challenge you to try to find a better deal. We have the best deal out there and the best quality. In closing, here is probably the most important point. You don't just take nascent iodine when disaster strikes, when there's some new giant disaster. The Northern Hemisphere is already double what it was 60 years ago with the radioactive background. I believe from the research I've done and the experts I've talked to, it is key to take nascent iodine to protect your thyroid from the radiological disaster that's already happened and unfortunately future disasters that will happen. That's why it's important to fill your thyroid up now with the healthy nascent iodine so that the sodium fluoride, the radioactive isotopes, and the rest of it can't get in. That's the key. This is something that across the board has been shown in study after study to be an absolutely essential nutrient in the body. Until a few decades ago, the government put it in the salt because they knew you needed it. But then they took that out that's good for the thyroid and put the sodium fluoride in that's bad for it. Talk about eugenics, talk about soft kill, talk about an invisible weapon in the water supply. This stuff is on record as a detoxifier for the fluoride they're adding to our water. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. <laughs>